Welcome back, everyone. Today we are super excited to have Adrian Griffin with us from Postpartum Support Virginia. And who are you? I'm Anjali Yusis, founder of Radiant Heart Center here in Virginia. And I'm Kathy Desai Seltzer, owner of Yana Infant Massage. And so, as Anjali said, we're here with Adrian, who is going to talk a lot and share about postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety. There's so much. Um, there's so many misconceptions, so much stigma, so much misunderstanding, and I think, you know, we talk about moms being lonely a lot, and if you're also, motherhood is lonely, and if you're feeling anxious or depressed, it's even lonelier. Mm -hmm. And so we want to learn from Adrian about what, what are the signs, what can we do to help, and just learn more about postpartum. Great. Well, thanks so much for having me on the show. I really sure. appreciate it. And so grateful to have the opportunity to talk about mom's mental health because yes. it's so just... important. We don't talk about it. We don't. So there's so much that we don't talk about about becoming yeah. a mom, right? Well, right. I don't know why we cut... We, we just don't help women become mothers the way that we should. And so there are so many issues, but um, particularly maternal mental health, and I'm very, very passionate about it because I had postpartum depression and anxiety when one of my children was born 17 years ago. And, um, you know, it took me so long to find the help that I needed. I knew something was wrong, and it took me about six months to get the help that I needed, and I kept thinking, it shouldn't be this hard, right? right? I live in Arlington, I speak English, I have a husband, yeah. I have insurance, I had access to the internet, and it was like banging my head against a brick wall. And I kept thinking, gosh, I gotta I got do something about this. And then, you know, once I started digging into this, I realized that mental health issues are the most common complication of pregnancy and childbirth. Can you believe that? Every time I say that to people, I'm yeah, like, yeah. mental health issues are the most common complication of pregnancy and childbirth. Yeah. Yeah. And so is that what inspired you to get into the work? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I had such a hard time finding help, and I remember the you know, the worst day in my life was the day that I reached out to my HMO for help. And, you know, I went through all these machinations, but I remember, you know, calling in and talking and coming in and seeing the nurse and seeing the psychiatrist. And, you know, I, they were all very well-meaning, but they just had no idea what was going on. And I remember leaving that appointment and I sat in the stairwell of um, the behavioral health office and I cried and I sobbed and I was like, how can it be this hard to get help. And that was the day I decided that I was gonna do something about it. You know, I had another child and you know, once I got in school, I you know, started a support group, recruited a few volunteers, and then launched Postpartum Support Virginia, a nonprofit organization in 2009. And um, it has been the joy of my life doing this work in helping other moms, you know, get on their feet yeah. and sort of navigate and, and trying to distinguish what sort of normal transition to motherhood, because transition to motherhood is hard. It's hard. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. don't talk about it. People no. Think, like, I know what it's like to be a mom. I've seen a lot of people being moms, so that part I get. Yeah. i got to figure out this pregnancy, labor, but I know how to be a mom or how I want to be a mom without factoring in kids come with their own missions and with their own personalities yeah. Yeah. right and you factor in a spouse or other children yeah. or, you know it's yeah it's did you tough. have postpartum depression with was your oldest so my first piece of cake easy pregnancy easy delivery easy baby you know my husband like oh we're so we should great do let's do it again, again. <laughs> right right <laughs> uh, right uh, i hear you went down the same path right yeah yeah and then the second was a totally different experience and i think part of what prompted my experience was i had a very scary emergency c-section and you know i and what i've learned since then is that traumatic birth can be very triggering, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, traumatic birth is is huge. You know, yeah. you lose agency of yourself. Uh, I mean, I remember lying there on the table thinking, if we weren't in the hospital, one of us probably would have died. Wow. You know, so um, so that was the beginning, and then you know, he, my second was a much needier baby than my first, and I had a toddler and a newborn, and you know, you're not getting any sleep, yeah. and it was just yeah, a so that's that. Yeah. So yeah. the domino effect, right? And it was just sort of a cascading yeah. down into this abyss of horribleness. Yeah. yeah. And so what are some common misconceptions about? All right, so a big misconception is that it's postpartum depression, meaning okay. Sadness after the baby's born. Right. That is such a myth, okay. right? Because it's not just postpartum. We know lots of moms experiencing experience anxiety or depression during pregnancy as well. In fact, I just read a new study that so if we save 20% of moms 
will experience anxiety or depression. A third of those women come into pregnancy already anxious or depressed. A third will develop anxiety or depression during pregnancy, and then a third develop in the postpartum period. Wow, so that's crazy. I know, yeah. right? We never talk about we it. We never talk about this. Assume, like you said, postpartum depression, that's it. After the baby's born, no. So, you know, really trying to raise, raise awareness, not only with moms, but with providers, particularly obstetric providers, whether it's a physician or a midwife or a nurse practitioner, whoever's providing your obstetric care. But they need to be talking to moms during pregnancy about how are you doing? We care as much about your mental health as your physical health. Right. So I think that's the number one misconception is that it's postpartum depression when it's so much more. So my big tagline now, it's not just postpartum, it's not just depression. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So and trying to get that across when people are finally just beginning to become familiar with the term postpartum depression and now we're saying, oh really, that's not really the right term. So you know, trying to figure out how to explain this. So we talk about mom's mental health yes. as is a better way to talk about it yeah 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 and you know in our society mental health is so taboo right, right. such a stigma around it like like why is it okay to treat from here down but not from here up <laughs> right yeah. you know and it's all it's all integrated. connected it's all connected yeah no it's yeah. true I mean and that adds to being a mom right it's already hard to be a mom then you add the mental health component and it's like yeah yeah. Let's not talk about anything. Right. Let's pretend, and we've got social media, so it's like, I'm doing so great. Everyone has this misconception, too, of what other people are going. You could see a mom smiling on Instagram, and an hour ago, she was crying right. in the bathroom. Yeah. Like, she's yeah. going to show the good part. Right? Well, and right, and you know, this is really, um, we talk about mental health in general. You know, there's been some significant uh, celebrities taking their lives in the last few years. So we had Kate Spade. Um, Robin Williams and Anthony Bodain, who was the was yeah, and like people, their families and friends said they talked to them a week before, a day before, an hour before, and they were fine. Like mental fine. health, right? They appeared to be fine. You know, mental health is so tenuous, and you can look fine, and you can put that bravado on and sound fine when you're really a mess inside. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, so um, I just always encourage people to talk to their friends, especially new moms. How are you dealing with the stress of having a baby in the house? How are you dealing with the stress, the transition, right? Because that sort of normalizes it. Right. It kind of says having a new baby can be stressful. Yeah. Right. Instead of, isn't it great? Aren't you just loving every minute? Yeah, we need to change that. Yeah. Right. Everyone, everyone's like, you know, people who have passed the childhood, toddler, Days are like, oh, enjoy every minute of it. They forgot what it was. No, yeah, you can't. Oh my gosh, how are you doing today? Yeah. is one of my favorite questions yeah. for pregnant women and new moms. How are you doing today? Right. You could be even great in the morning and terrible in the afternoon, but it's narrowing it down to. It's a great way to ask. How are you doing today? Yeah. Right. Okay. So, what do you wish pregnant women knew or new families while the mother is pregnant? So I wish that um, moms and families knew that becoming a mom, becoming a family, becoming parents is the single biggest transition in somebody's life, right? So we have these other terms for periods of transition. So we have adolescence when we go from being a child to being an adult, right? And then at the end, we have menopause when we move out of the childbearing years. But there's no real term for becoming a mom. Um, I've heard some, uh, people trying to resurrect this term matrescence, which I don't love the term, but I love the concept that this is a huge transition. The the transition, um, all the, the changes that you go through physically, emotionally, mentally, you know, spiritually. and we really spiritually, right. But we just sort of leave moms out there hanging by themselves, you know, and in other cultures and in, in, in what we used to have in our country is that, you know, a mom would have the baby, but she'd come home and be cared for by the mom, the sisters, the aunts. You know, when my mom had me and my siblings, she lived in New York City and she lived in an apartment and she could walk to her mom's house and her sister lived down here and the parents-in-law lived over here, right? And, and then she moved out to Long Island, but it was on a street where all the moms were staying at home and having kids. And so there was, there was this natural social community around yeah. it. And we really don't have that. Yeah. Especially here, we're so trans transitory. We and we're so yeah. type A, and we're so like, yeah. 
You know, and in other cultures, you know, the mom comes home and for 30 days or 40 days for a set period of time, the aunts, the moms, the grandmothers, they all circle around and they take care of the mom. The mom takes care of the baby. And they also take care of the family so that the mom's job is to rest and recuperate from the nine months of pregnancy and then this transition to motherhood. And they're teaching her how to become a mom. And, you know, in other countries, there are lower rates of postpartum depression and anxiety in the countries where they have this kind of wraparound care. And then they have um, cultural ceremony to welcome the mom into the community. So, you know, she, she is presented and welcomed and applauded uh, for becoming a mom. We're here, I think sometimes we're even penalized for becoming yes, absolutely. moms. Yeah. And the whole thing is to return back to normal, right? Get back in your size two jeans, get back to work, you know, get your house cleaned up, just all of that stuff. And it's, you're expecting them to be robots. Like, yeah. Just machines. And yeah. Humans. I saw this thing recently about how come in the United States, we expect, expect moms to work like they don't have children, children like they don't work, yeah. right? And yeah, it so I do really think that that um, that moms and dads knew that this was going to be such a big transition. I kind of I, I try to make the analogy to what it's like when you're engaged and you're getting set to get married, right? During the engagement, the whole focus is on the wedding, yeah. Right, the flowers, the dress, the venue, and then you're like, you never know what it's like to be the first married, year, yeah. Right? right. So the same thing during pregnancy, the whole focus is on labor and delivery and the birth plan and getting the right baby clothes and, and the gender right. reveal and that. Yeah. Instead of like really preparing for this huge transition. transition. And I don't even know if you can really, but I think if we, at least we started talking about it, you know, that would be. And giving moms the support, whether it's in a maternity leave or ability to breastfeed like in public crazy concept right <laughs> or like you know give her meals yeah. and meals to right yes. and the mother's blessing is about holding space for the mom to be where she can share all her fears with a tribe of women that she plans on leaning for leaning on in the early motherhood phase our baby showers are so focused on aren't you excited here are materialistic Here's the things, stuff. So you're, you're set because we gave you a stroller, you got right. you know, right. without taking care of the emotional or spiritual right. person who right. is in this transition. Yeah. So that is something that I'm trying to bring working with pregnant women. Let's have a mother's blessing. Sure, do the baby shower if you want to collect the materialistic stuff, but call on your small tribe of women and have them gather to, so you can say, this is what I'm really nervous about. Right. We have to grieve our womanhood yes. because we are becoming moms. Yep. We have to share our fears about labor or birth or motherhood, you know, and there are women who have had anxiety and depression in the past who have that fear. Absolutely. But at a baby shower, you're not going to be like, well, I'm really worried about <laughs> <laughs> like, Yeah. Wow, it's right. not the place to do it. <laughs> right. And so we need to change that and either add that into the baby shower kind of itinerary or modality or continue to teach about this mother's blessing and holding that space for women to be really real with all of their fears and not just this happy smiling. So I've heard about people having a postpartum party instead of... Yes. Uh, yeah, that's some shift happening there too. Yeah, so again, moms, women coming together to support that mom now that she's a mom and yeah. being able to talk about these things and providing the the care and the services as opposed to the things. things yeah. yeah. And we'll you need the things. Yeah, you need the things, but yes. you need that That's care. Cool. I have a girlfriend who lived out in Seattle and once a week she met moms randomly at the playground park and they collectively decided once a week they would host, take turns hosting, potluck, bring whatever you need for your kid or bring something to share if you feel like it. And it was a literal check-in of how you're doing yeah. emotionally that week with baby yeah. or with your partner. Oh, that's awesome. Right? That's and, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Peer support, right? Peer Friends. Support. We, we yeah. need the social support. We do. That in our society has just sort of frayed. Yeah. Yeah. So is that what you would say is one of the, the biggest challenges facing families in this country today? Is the lack of community? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the lack of paid maternity leave and, yes. you know, mom's having to go back to work. So, I mean, there's so many systemic problems. But yes. I do think sort of this lack of social support, you know, is so, so vital. Yeah. Um, and you need it on many levels. You know, there's family support, there's neighbor support, there's, you know, the moms you meet in the park support. Yeah. But just even in general, like, 
Like, I remember when having two little kids and going to the grocery store, I'm like, gosh, there should be a checkout line just for moms, moms yes. right? <laughs> right? Like, right. you know, it's really hard work being right. a mom of little kids and taking care of the house, the home, the family, you know, yes. whatever, that we need to cut moms some slack. Yes. Right. Yeah. And they do it in other countries, right? I mean, right. there's one other people taking care of it. The community kind of knows to take care of the mom. We're here. It falls on the mom to ask for help. Right. Which we feel so uncomfortable right. doing. So then we suck it up and we're like, here, I'm at the grocery store with my two kids and this is really hard, but everyone else is doing it, so I guess I have to, instead of just being... You know, and that's something I, I talk about a lot with the postpartum depression stuff. Like, we need to start talking about this early in pregnancy, like as part of the whole intake, you know, you assess for all kinds of things, and one of which is, you know, do a little screen. Have you ever had anxiety or depression in the past? Have you had it in the family? With complicated reproductive history, there's some um, factors that we know can contribute to this. So we should be talking about it right, from the get-go. Um, and checking in periodically with mom. Hey, you know, we're checking your blood pressure, but also how are you doing? How's your sleep? How's your mood? How's your appetite? You know, basic questions. Basic questions. Basic well, we questions. Don't get, they're not asked. No, right? no, because the obstetrician hasn't been trained. trained. They don't get screen. You know, um, reimbursed for screening. They don't know where to send mom for help. I mean, we hear all these excuses. So what happens is we let mom go along, getting worse and worse, and then she falls into the abyss, right. and then we expect her to. Say, hey, I need help. Right. Climb up out of this, navigate With the complicated the mental yeah. health system right. when she's already at her worst. We need yeah. to like back it up. Yeah. yeah. Take care of it before. Absolutely. And the sooner we start talking about it, we know we, we educate mom and provider. And, um, you know, then it, it, it's something that they're checking in all about uh, regularly. And so mom can say, hey, you know, compared to the last time I saw you, I'm not doing this great. What do you think? Let's talk. Yes. Yeah. What are some. Um, what are some signs that you might have postpartum depression or or anxiety? Yeah, so all kinds of things. So you know, it really runs the gamut. So first, I, I also want to talk about the baby blues because this is sort of a normal transition period. Okay. Most women go through, and it's sort of like an up and down period, no more than two to three weeks. And it's you know, your body is recovering from the huge hormonal shifts that happen during labor and delivery, and. Um, you know, I remember feeling that with my first one, like one minute you're happy, the next minute you're sad, yeah. but it was very passing, very transitory, right? Resolved within two to three weeks. So anxiety depression is something that's much more serious. If your mood is um, impacting your daily life and making it hard to sort of get through the day, this is when we start to get concerned. And it can be, you know, all across the, the board. It can be, you know, feeling sad, feeling overwhelmed, feeling lonely, but like, deep-seated, not just like, oh, I'm lonely, I'm going to go out and talk to my neighbor, but like deep-seated. You can't shake it. You can't yeah. get yourself to go out and talk to your Exactly. Neighbor. You're exactly. embarrassed or shame or there's... Yeah. 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 So um, anxiety, a lot of irritability, uh, lots of feelings of guilt, uh, like I don't want my baby. You know, um, I wish I could give my baby away. I wish I could go back. I made a mistake having a baby. Those kinds of thoughts. Um, lots of moms have thoughts about hurting themselves or their baby. And I want to make something very clear. Just because you have these thoughts does not mean that you're going to act on these thoughts. And it does not mean that you're a bad mom. It's part of the whole process. Um, we all have intrusive thoughts. Like, I'm sure. I want to kill my husband. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, like, a common one for me is I'll be driving down the highway and in front of me is a truck with, like, um, logs on it or yeah. cars, you know. What if one of them came off, yeah. it impaled me and, you know, Okay, the chances of that happening, right, right. very, very low. Right. But I just pull out. Yeah. I go around and my life goes on. During this time frame, moms can become obsessed, can become obsessed with these thoughts of hurting themselves or their baby. And who is going to say, I'm having this thought of hurting my baby? Right. So I, if I can interrupt, yeah. I've actually not shared this before because I felt shame. Um, and I, I think only with my husband I shared it. This was I was probably two or three months postpartum and I was like, I'm, and I didn't have... Um, the other things that you mentioned, but I was like, I'm having like, you know, thoughts of like hurting her, but I don't know why. Like, I love her, and you know, and and he was so supportive and validating, and then it passed, and I, I was like, what? That was really. It made me feel like very sinister and creepy to like feel that way about my child who I love very much, and I don't know what that was, 
but it wasn't something that I felt comfortable sharing with anybody because I, I was like, wow, why am I thinking that about my right. baby? Right, it's very, very common. And in fact, in all the support groups that we run, Postpartum Support Virginia runs support groups all around the state, this is something that we train our support group leaders to ask. Yeah. Are you having any thoughts that are scaring you? Thoughts of hurting yourself or your baby? And then each of us will talk about the scary thought that we had, right? They're called intrusive thoughts. Um, and it can be everything from, you know, what if I drop the baby down the stairs or off the right. balcony? What if I put the baby in the microwave? What if I let go of the stroller in the car? And yeah. run? Oh my God. Right. What if I crash the car when I'm driving the baby? Yeah. You know, on and on and on. And they're very passing, but they're very scary. It's like, where did that come from? Right. right? And again, just because mom is having these thoughts does not mean that she's a bad mom or that she's going to act on these thoughts. But we need to ask about them. It's all part of an obsessive compulsive disorder. Yeah. Well, it's so. so important you're doing the work by having those questions being asked. Right. Because when they're asked, it's like, oh, this is normal. Other right. people have done it. Yes. Right? Yep. Other people have, have this thought. Absolutely. Otherwise, it's like you said, you shared it, which is great that you even shared it with Jordan. Yeah. I know that he works with mental, mental health. health. Yeah. Um, but I think it's so important. You're normalizing it because women don't know that. So then in their right. head, on top of the scary thought, it's like, I'm like, I can't. One. Right, I can't. absolutely. Yeah. Of course, because who else who would, else would think, think about that? doing that to their child? Right. Yeah. Lots and lots of yeah. women. And they're passing and they're scary. And you're like, whoa, where did that come from? Yeah. Right? And and moms take huge precautions not to act on those thoughts. Like, for example, uh, one mom I know had thoughts of using a knife and stabbing her child. And so she expresses to her husband, he said, do you want me to lock up all the knives? Yes. So he took them, put them somewhere that she didn't know about, and then, you know, she felt so much better about it. Now, fortunately, we have mental health providers who specialize in working with moms with these issues. And so if they contact us for help, Postpartum Support Virginia, we can refer them to our support groups and to the mental health providers who can work through these issues and understand what's going on. Um, and this, uh, you know, this is really, really important um, that we get moms connected with the right kind of care if they're experiencing true anxiety or depression. When I was going through this, I remember seeing a male therapist, I'm not sure why, who had no children. And he asked me sort of the standard depression questions like, you know, have you gained or lost weight recently? Well, yes. Yeah, I just had a baby. Had a baby. <laughs> you know, have your sleep patterns changed? Well, yes, yes I just had a baby. Do you enjoy doing the things that you used to? Well, I would if I had died, but I just had a baby. Like, like totally missed it. So, like, you know there's certain screening tools to use. There's certain questions to ask. There's certain, you know, types of interventions that helps mom during this time frame and so at postpartum support virginia we worked really hard to identify and train mental health providers that we feel very comfortable connecting moms with who know this stuff awesome. and who know how to help moms recover i i call mm -hmm. I, how do i so you can call you can email us um and we um we'll we provide can, all this information yep, below yep postpartumva.org um, and so you can call or email and we have staff and volunteers who return calls or emails within 24 hours and we can talk you through things we provide social support over the phone we can give some education here's what's going on here's what you might be thinking here's some books you might want to look at here's some websites you might want to look at here's where our local support groups are you know and we can make direct connections to mental health providers both therapists and psychiatrists if need be so once we say once you found us once you found postpartum support Virginia, you don't have to search anymore. Okay. We can get you the help that you need. Yeah. And for our viewers who aren't in Virginia? Right, so we're part of a larger network called awesome. Postpartum Support International. Um, and their website is postpartum.net. And they have volunteers in all 50 states around awesome. the country. They do the same kind of work. Um, again, identifying support groups and mental health providers and connecting moms with resources as local as possible. There's also online resources through Postpartum Support International. Um, there's resources for dads. So again, once you find Postpartum Support Virginia or Postpartum Support International, you don't have to look any further. That's, you found the right people. Woo. Yeah. I'm so glad. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. What an incredible service to moms. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about what kinds of policy things that postpartum is involved in that could help change? Sure. I know that there's a new drug out, but then those have its side effects and you have to go to the clinic to get it. And Right, right. Okay, so um, 
on a policy level, um, you know, we're really looking at how do we get screening and information to moms, right? So uh, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Academy of Family Physicians have all come out within the last several years recommending that their providers screen moms. But we know that, that providers are reluctant to screen if they don't have resources. So that's why at Postpartum Support Virginia, we've really focused on putting those resources in place so that providers can screen. So that's sort of the biggest policy. Another big one that we're talking about at the national level is that um, most moms, if they're on Medicare, lose their insurance coverage after 60 days postpartum. When there's that, there's a lot of stuff that happens, you know, up to a year postpartum, even longer. So there's movement to expand Medicaid coverage for one year postpartum. 50% of the births in our country are covered by Medicaid. So, you know, half the moms are losing their insurance coverage after 60 days. So that's, you know, at a very high level, some of the issues that we're working on. Um, so you did mention, yes, there is a new drug that's out, and this is really a game changer. So most anxiety and depression, you know, is treated by a combination of things. So self-care, social support, therapy, and medication, a combination of those things. Um, most antidepressant medications take four to six weeks typically to have some kind of impact. This new medicine that is out is an IV infusion and um, women experience symptom relief within 12 to 24 hours. Wow. Yeah. So it has to do with during pregnancy, estrogen and progesterone ramp way, way up, like a thousand fold. Then baby's born and they come crashing down. There are some women who are very susceptible to that change in hormones. And so this is, uh, this new drug is um, a progesterone uh, derivative kind of thing. So it's like trying to sort of reverse this, this or crash. Make it less. Yeah, yeah, let's make it less dramatic. So, yeah, so it's a game changer. Um, unfortunately, it's expensive and moms have to go inpatient, but this company, Sage Therapeutics, who is creating it, is really, really dedicated to trying to help moms get the help if they need it. And so, that's for more extreme cases. Right, 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 right. And it's focused specifically on postpartum depression, severe postpartum severe. depression. Yeah, yeah. So, thanks for asking about that. So, it's one more tool in the toolkit that providers can offer. Summarize. So, you know, anxiety and depression are very, very common. One in five women will experience them at least, at least one in five, either during pregnancy or the first year after having a baby. And we need to be open and honest about it. And I'd encourage all new moms to ask their mom friends, hey, how are you doing today? How's it going? I'm really having a tough day. Here's what I'm dealing with. How about you? Um, and, you know, if it's persistent, get help, right? Talk to your, your partner, talk to your family, talk to your medical provider, contact Postpartum Support Virginia or Postpartum Support International, and we can get you the help that you need. Awesome. I've learned so much today. Me too. Adrian. So that was amazing information. I'm oh, so glad you're doing the work you are doing. Thank you. Oftentimes, and it's our kind of deepest wounds or yeah. pain that lead us into what we commit ourselves to, but... I'm grateful that you, you know, went through that experience and had such a low that you realized I need to bring awareness to this and help other women. Yeah. And you've dedicated 10 years. You're going on 10. Oh, well, my, so my son with whom I had postpartum depression is now almost 18 years old. So yeah, so I've been working on this for, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. It's been that long. <laughs> um, and I never in my life did I think I'd be doing like women's mental health. Right. right? right. Like it was nowhere, like it was not even in my yeah. constellation. But you and had an experience I did, that, and that moved you to realizing yes. the importance. Yes. And the work you're doing has changed hundreds and hundreds of women's lives and families. Yeah. So thank you so much. Well, I can't work. imagine doing anything else. You awesome. know, it's it's the take what you're given and, and do something with it, just like what you're doing. And yeah. we all owe it to to moms and families to, to help them. So exactly. thanks so much for having me on the show. Thank it was you really so great. Much. And if you are a, a seasoned, a new pregnant mom, reach out to other mamas that you know. And it's one thing that I've learned today. Yes. When you have gone through it, you're like, oh, well, I know she's had a tough time, but so did I. She'll get through it. But right. not everybody handles it the same way. The results aren't always the same. So just check in. Right. How are you doing? Yeah. yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. How are you doing today? Yes. So thank you for being here. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. We'll also add Adrian's information down below. Comment and let us know if you've had any mental health issues. We'd love to hear your story, and we're here for you. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Oh, and as they say, and as they say ain't no hood like a motherhood. motherhood. Ah. <laughs> love it. Uh.